All right, chill. It's on. Tuesday, streaming time with me. You already know what it is. Phillies Tuesday. I am back in action. My name is Mike by Fulco. Uh, I am director of technology for the gymnasium.com. Um, I try and get on uh, Twitch just about every week, this time, Tuesday afternoon, East Coast time uh, in the U.S., um, to uh, live stream my work, my job, my what I'm working on, um, to show you uh, what it's like to be me and to be someone building things in the real world. Um, if you're not familiar with the gymnasium, uh, it is a free online um, code school. So we teach, uh, we have courses that are available for free. You can enroll at any time. They are self-paced video-based courses with some phenomenal instructors on all kinds of really killer web technologies um, and strategic things, uh, tools, technologies, um, guides to time management, uh, copywriting, responsive web design uh, is a really phenomenal course. Uh, you should take a look at these courses and let us know what you think about them. Uh, you can find us on Twitter or email us or uh, jab the, um, when you're logged into your account, there'll be a little help icon here. You can uh, click on that and let us know what you think. Um, we're always here for you. We give away our courses for free because we believe that uh, a more smarter empowered workforce is a better empowered workforce. And so that's what it is. Um, what we've been working on for the past few weeks is developing a job module to um, upgrade the functionality behind this bit here uh, and on some other parts of the page, or of the site, I should say. Um, the, uh, I've been building a React node uh, microservice. Uh, last week we switched over from sort of plain node where we built everything from scratch to uh, create React app um, to simplify some of the process. And essentially what we're building is uh, something that will be launched into this uh, part of the uh, app via an iframe. Um, and the thing I've been working on over the past few weeks, which is why we unplugged everything and replugged it into uh, create React app, is some dynamic routing that will let you um, Using so this is the this is the microservice here. Um, what we want to do is plug into this microservice so that I could put a, in a latitude and a longitude in those two spots. So something like I don't know negative thirty two point and twelve point oh five one six seven. Uh, and when you hit that, this grabs jobs near to that latitude and longitude, um, and feeds them back to you as a response. Um, what we might end up doing is uh, something like this. Uh, which you've probably seen before too, latitude and longitude that way, and then that way we could have other things equals, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the whole, the, really the, the entire goal here is to make it so that we have a nice, easy to configure, easy to access, iframable thing that can display jobs on the site. So, um, <laughs> I was a little bit under the weather when we finished the stream last week, I was losing my voice. Um, I've got a uh, oh, well, I've got a little bit of water, um, and hopefully I won't lose my voice today. I've been drinking tea um, to stave off the inevitable. Um, but um, all that to say that uh, we'll pick up where we were last week and hopefully make some good progress here uh, and and start in on um, getting this thing smarter than it was when we started. The past week or two have really not resulted in that because we we're doing some rework. But you know that's kind of the nature of software development uh, and. You can't be mad about that. You just gotta kinda roll with the punches. So, let's talk about it. Uh, I'm gonna pull up my IDE here. Um, inside of here, you'll see the project. This should look familiar if you've been with us for the past few weeks. We did switch over to create React app, so there's a lot of stuff in here that is boilerplate React stuff that we've uh, stripped out. Um, like this app CSS probably doesn't even need to be here right now. We might plug it in later. Um, we've got a job listing component, uh, which spits out the jobs that you're seeing on the uh, microservice pages. Um, there are uh, a handful of utils that we wrote which pull jobs from an API. Um, and really the, the result of this right now is this very, very plain looking um, but, but functional microservice. So uh, anything that hits this URL, regardless of what's pu put in after this, I wanna say, uh, yes, we'll spit out the same thing, but the links that it produces are correct. You can see at the very bottom of the screen, it links to aquint slash findwork slash 
a bunch of other stuff with some UTM codes that we'll use for tracking. So let's talk about routing. Okay, here we go. We are going to talk about how this app is, how, how this app and how Create React app does routing to begin with. Um, if you remember from a week or two ago, we were using uh, Express to stand up a, a web server and Express routes to do some of the routing um, where we were configuring. Uh, it looked something like app.get or app.use uh, and then a URL and some function calls. Um, within a React app, uh, there are actually other ways to do routing. Uh, you can cook up your own routing um, solution without a doubt, uh, but there's some really nice tools available. Um, and the one that I have been using, my, my routing tool du jour, if you will, uh, is called React Router. Just seeing if I've included it in the project already. I have not. So that's good. We will uh, go through the process of adding React Router to this app. Uh, I'm going to pull up the docs for it here. Um, <coughs> so uh, I'm just going to go to the quick start here, and we'll show you how this works. So the first thing is to add, um, well, we have already done Create React App. We've already done all of this stuff. That's cool. Um, we need to add React Router to the project. So to do that, I've, I'm just going to grab whatever. I'll type it in. Um, I'm going to stop my app from running. I'm going to do yarn add React Router DOM, just like it says here. Uh, hit Enter. It will add that to my package.json dependencies. So now I've got a reference to that. I don't really need to pay attention to it in the background. And what I can do is uh, start using the React Router DOM um, libraries, components that it provides within the app. So uh, you can see here from the very simple example, uh, which might be a little overly simple, but um, they've got a couple of pages, home, about, topic, topics, etc. Uh, and they set up routing um, by uh, rendering a router with some content within it. And within that router, um, it, our routes are rendered. So. Um, basically, depending on what the um, URL of the page looks like, it will render different routes. Uh, easy enough. This is what it all looks like. And so we're, we're going to work on a, a simple sort of version of this uh, right now within the app. So I've added the libraries. We're going to go to the root of the app, which is this app.js appropriately. Um, we're actually, well, yeah, we're going to do a few things here, but one of the first things I'm going to do is wrap the whole app in a router. So um, we're going to include some of these things that were um, in that tutorial. Uh, we might not use a link here. We will certainly use a route. So I'm going to, um, in this return here, we're going to say router and router. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, this is the right place to do it. I was just kind of second guessing myself there. Um, anything within the router that d isn't wrapped in a route will render no matter what. So right now, this should actually still render. So if I did a yarn start and started up my app again, it'll crack open a browser tab, reload it, and nothing should look visually different. Although I might get some compile warnings or something like that in my console here. Each child or in the in an array or iterator should use a unique key prop. That's a great point. There we go. Just to keep React happy, we'll do that. Um, so here's what we can start doing in here. Uh, now that I have this router wrapped around my app, which I can show to you further by switching over to the React DevTools tab uh, is I've got the app. It has a browser router, which is what we just defined. I took browser router and renamed it to router with this as. So this is an, effectively a browser router. Um, there are a couple of different routers that React uh, Router provides um, because React applies in more than just the, uh, the browser. So you might have a, a router for a mobile device or for a um, uh, out of browser routing, so uh, if you're doing server side rendering, uh, you don't have the the browser available to you. So certain things aren't available, like the window object or the document object aren't necessarily available, and you need to do some some things to check for them or to generate them behind the scenes. That's neither here nor there. 
Uh, sorry, let me keep an eye on all of my things to make sure everyone can hear me and whatnot. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Um, everything looks good. So what I was saying is there's this browser router here which has a router inside of it, um, which is this, is, this is sort of the internal routing of um, how the browser router works. It creates a router sort of subcomponent. And then you can see the app, uh, which is what we are generating here. This is all my stuff. But if I put in here route, and I said, well, let's look at the docs. So I'm just gonna create a default route uh, path equals slash uh, and component equals, we're gonna make a component here. So I'm gonna create a new component uh, and it's gonna be called a job list.js. We'll create this quickly. a nicer name job list there go okay so I've got that all set up um, we need to now include that so this is gonna say job list and in here I need to export my job list oh and I need to zoom in so you guys can see this I always forget to do that okay export default as job list from job list. Great, now I've got this job list guy here. I can go into my app and include that from my components. So that will look like this. So now when I'm on the default path, it'll render this job list. Um, and it should render it at the bottom of the page right now. Uh oh, a router may have only one. Well, yeah, may have only one child element. Ah, this is uh, apparently true. So I'm gonna wrap this all in a div. What that means is it may have only one sort of root child element. So you can see that we just rendered this list of jobs, and at the very bottom it says job list. So um, basically, what I'm gonna do is uh, upend. I'm gonna upend this and put it in t inside of the job list component because there may be different um, presentations of the, the data coming back from the API that we end up using. So um, that means I no longer need the job listing in here. All right, this can go back to a single line and we'll pull this up because I'm sure it'll yell at me at some point. We're gonna say uh, import and then we're gonna say job listing from here. There we go. We're gonna start to make this all smarter and break it down a little more um, in due time. But for the time being, I'm just gonna start by sort of simply setting up routing and showing off how it works. Um, we're gonna have to move a lot of this stuff over actually. So uh, that, that's actually probably a good thing because it'll simplify this thing. So um, so we're gonna turn this into a full on component and you'll see why in a second. Basically, we're going to pull in these life cycle, life cycle methods from the app uh, into the job list. So we will do grab all these. And 
drop them into here. So you can see that um, this will end up simplifying um, some bits and, and sort of making a, some more complicated, but it's okay. Um, so we've taken, now the app component is only responsible for routing uh, and the job list component does all the magic to go pull a, in a job list and display it. Um, this may present itself in different ways in the future, but for now, we have this job list. It has uh, some state some state that gets set from a constructor. We have let's see. This should be this dot state. Oh, we need to pull in map from here. That all makes sense. Uh, what have I done wrong? So, cannot read property jobs of null. It means this dot state is not. Uh, an app.js, I say. Now this can just be we no longer need to wrap it uh, wrap a render function because this is now much simpler. It may look like I'm just moving some things around and I sort of am, uh, but this will be more sensible in no time. There we go. So now, now we have uh, index.js, which sets up the app to render in um, the HTML file that is loaded. Uh, app.js, which sets up routes. Uh, and then we, our only route currently is this job list, which uh, creates, like goes, goes out to our API, gets a list of jobs. And then for each of those jobs, it renders a... Job listing. I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong file. That's why this job list goes and gets a list of jobs, and then for each of those jobs, it renders a job listing. Piece of cake, right? Um, so th there is some separation of uh, behaviors here and functions uh, or functionality. Um, we will probably um, do a little bit more of moving around to some of this stuff on stream today. Uh, but now we can start poking around with some of the routing stuff, uh, and I could I can show you, for example. Um, if we wanted to create a route for a, oh, let's just, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna say route path equals terms. And I'm gonna create a terms component and let's say for some reason I needed to show terms and conditions. Um, I would do this. Let's see, h1 terms, you agree to these terms. And so by saving that and now including it in this list here, and actually including it in the app, shouldn't change the way this looks, but if for some reason I went to terms, now we have a whole terms page <laughs> and I am duly, ah, okay. So there's actually something kind of subtle happening here. Um, yeah, 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 we need, we need another, to use another one of the um, uh, React Router components here, which is not in the demo for some reason. And uh, maybe they're doing a clever or more simple um, version of, of um, a tutorial. But essentially, uh, we're going to render a switch here. 
which is a special component which basically says look at all of the children routes I have and render only one that matches closest closest to what's input here so um, I have these terms uh, in the URL so it's rendering only the terms and essentially if I put anything else in which includes things that don't match terms it'll render that however I believe if I put terms and then one it'll still render the terms page because it searches from top to bottom and whatever matches first is what is chosen hope that makes some sense okay good now it might also make more sense to put the app on the outermost side of this um, and just for some more tidying up I don't need this CSS file so I'm just gonna get rid of it although we might in the future I don't know suit me okay that is a silly example oh that's how we would set up terms or terse terse does not render terms should still render Lovely. So um, this might mean that someday down the line we would have uh, the default jobs module would sort of uh, jobs microservice would uh, render just a um, list like this and we might have something that says uh, slash I don't know tiny or something like that which would show in a tinier like a smaller layout version of this. Um, it's a nice way to do that kind of presentation. Now um, what I was talking about before is there are a couple of different options to do this kind of routing. Um, and I'm going to start with what will probably not be the way to go. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll probably end up doing something other than this in the end. But I'm going to say, I'll, I'll show you how it works. So um, I'm going to get rid of the terms thing for now it's sort of not sensible it's not something we'll end up using um, I'll even delete it we don't need it goodbye terms great so um, let's say we wanted to render this job list and have an option to include latitude and longitude here um, now when I come to the app it renders nothing uh, because I don't have a specific, that's a too specific route. Um, we can do that. So if no latitude and longitude are given, we're gonna have to come up with some sensible default. But, so now, oops, now if I include and 10 and 20 is my latitude and longitude, uh, this page will have a latitude and longitude provided and I can show that to you coming into this router Oh, these props are not easy to see. Um, there you go. Params. No, nothing. Lovely. So what I'm going to do is in my job list component, I'm going to put a debugger in. So I have to add a prop for the match. And we're going to say job list dot prop types equals this prop types thing is just for de essentially developer friendliness. Um, but this is saying that uh, there's an incoming prop that can be provided to this job list called match, which now I can reference within the render um, function here, or the constructor, which is probably where we'll need it. So. Okay, and we're going to just put a debug line in here. If a match comes in, which is something that's passed from the React router, we're going to take a look at what's in there. So uh, we can see here that we have this match with parameters latitude and longitude coming in of 10 and 20. Uh, the full path comes in as that, the URL. Um, so this is the path that it matches to within the route structure. The URL is what's actually up here past the um, localhost bit. Uh, is exact is true, which means it matches this thing exactly. Um, 
So we know we have a latitude and longitude in here. So what I could say is um, latitude equals, well, we're going to do if match.params and match.params.latitude. Oh. I should be very careful to spell all these things out all the time. I don't want to start mixing these up. OK. Uh, latitude then so up here we're going to define some sensible defaults latitude equals and I'm just going to put this here and I'm going to say that's got to be a let we'll say latitude equals match dot params uh, latitude so uh, if we have a match, meaning that uh, React Router has passed in something for a match, and it has params, and it has latitude, then we're going to do that. Um, we're also going to do the same for if match.params and match.params.longitude. Longitude equals match.params.longitude. Now, we're going to do some simplifying here. Um, so <laughs> pay attention, it'll get a little confusing. Let longitude equal, and we're going to use this default from below. And I'll explain what's going on. So, um, I picked Charlotte because that's where I live, and that's the only thing I care about. Um, what's going on here? So, um, I've defined these defaults. I check to see if lat and long are coming in through URL. If they're coming in through the URL, I instead of using those defaults, set the latitude and longitude that's come in. Um, then we pull the market, then we fetch the jobs for that market. Now, we're going to simplify this a bit. Uh, this is some Boolean logic bits, but basically I'm checking for match everywhere, or I'm checking for match first. And then in both of these if statements, I'm checking for match.params. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that up here, because we know we need these params. Uh, so, oops. So now that makes these a little easier to read. And I believe this should work. Maybe not. Uh, there's a magic spread operator in <laughs> uh, ES6 JavaScript, and I always forget how this works without saying let here. That works perfectly fine. This would set this value latitude to match.params.latitude. But apparently, I don't remember how to do it without using let or const before it. So we're just going to let those be. Um, that's still pretty easy to read. I'm OK with that. So here's all of those things done. So that simplifies that. So now when we come in here, we're going to refresh this. And now if latitude and longitude are provided, uh, we, we pull up a latitude and longitude. I'm going to um, set the state uh, with a market to so we can see what the state is. Um, so we're going to say. We're in the constructor, so we can say this dot state equals uh, and then an object with market. And because we don't need to do it twice, we're going to say jobs and assign it to a blank object, essentially. So that should still work just fine. I may get some complaints that I have an unused state thing. Um, man, where's that coming from? Generate UTM slug is defined but never used in the job list. OK, we still need to use that at some point, so I'm going to let that bother me. Um, so now we have this market here. So I'm going to render the market that we're serving jobs for just to show um, what that looks like, what, what actual market is there. So uh, um, And in here, we'll put a cheeky little h1 showing jobs for market. Now this should refresh. <laughs> Objects are not valid as a React child. Oh no, what have I done? 
God, what have I done? Ah, uh, I see, I see, I see. Market dot, so we have these markets in here, market dot name. Trying jobs for San Diego, look at that. And maybe we don't wanna have this be gigantic, so we'll make it an H6 for now, which defies everything. I should probably use a different tag. Um, we'll use a P. So apparently latitude, longitude 1020 is closest to San Diego. If I leave these out, it should show them for Charlotte. There we go. Uh, and if I put in another um, latitude and longitude from my constants, that should work. So let's do Boston just for shiggles here. Oops, slash latitude. Slash longitude. That did not work. Pourquoi? Hmm. Let's see what happened. That's an interesting one. Okay, okay. In my job list, let's get the market. Latitude and longitude are coming in correctly, but apparently my logic for determining the market is not working right now. Let's look at San Diego's latitude and longitude. 32.71 and negative 117. And Boston's is 42 and negative 71, like actually exactly what I put in. Let's try something close to it to be safe. This might be a weird fence post issue. No. Okay, that's good. We found a problem. Let's start debuggerizing that function. Which was in util. Get market for lat long. Um, So let's drop in a, uh, <laughs> this is gonna be tricky. I think it's possible that the problem is in here uh, and this function gets called a bazillion times. So we're gonna do this with some, um, yeah, some console logs probably are best. So we're gonna say um, input chords, Are near list to market name so far. We found a bug. Let's go figure it out. Okay. Very interesting. I'm gonna do this the fancy JavaScript way. We're gonna make this a little more helpful. So we'll give the input coordinates of parentheses and then a position dot latitude and position dot longitude are nearest to Make sure I've got that right. Yes. Okay. What happened? What did I break? Position is not defined. Huh? <laughs> because I misspelled it. That's super funny.
How rude of me. Okay. Ooh. We're getting an undefined number. That's a sign. Possibly because that is a typo. Never mind. So this just just downright has to do with my logic being wrong somewhere in here. Okay, so now we will investigate this function and see what's going on here. <laughs> okay, we uh, here we're doing some Cartesian differences, uh, Cartesian distances between two points. Um, we know that we have latitudes and longitudes, or else we would see this. Um, I, I suspect that somewhere in this these um, magic modulus section is where things are going wrong. So we're going to do a console.log, uh, and we're going to say um, lats are, well, position one is. Excuse me. Is I forgot a parenthesis. This is. That's okay. Okay, so. <laughs> thank you, Andrew. Um, the, I gotta get rid of this annoying ass debugger line. Fresh. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna print the difference. Uh, I want to see the actual difference that it's claiming is less. Distance of infinity uh, to 255, then it goes to 252, which says that these coordinates are closer to New York City, which may well be right with these coordinates, and then 218 for San Francisco, which is definitely not right. 218, hmm. My logic is not working here. Let's put in the actual coordinates for Boston again. Ooh, 
which should be a distance of actual zero. Okay, I've done something wrong. That's cool. <laughs> uh, that comes down to the math in this function. Square root of the sum of two squares. Is that correct? Two minus one, two minus one. So let's break this up into a thing that a human could read. Make sure. Uh, exponent operator. Math.pow. Uh huh. This, I feel like this is the correct shorthand, but we're gonna make sure. that was the correct operator this will return the exact same values and the error in my math is somewhere else okay It all seems right to me. This is um, this formula is the, the the Cartesian difference, which is distance, which is um, on a two-dimensional plane the distance between two points. Um, it must be that I have boned this somehow. Which is interesting. Because picture of the way latitudes and longitudes work it's to show off here okay so on this random web app I've pulled up uh, somewhere Boston ish which is around about here has a Latitude of 42-ish and longitude of 71-ish. 42.35, 71 point blah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the, the trick, and what I might be doing wrong, is these zeroing out of the latitude and longitude around the uh, either prime meridian or date line, which would be right around here. So it goes, you can see the longitude goes from negative 179 there to 179, come on, move over. There, let's call it. Huh, okay, let's see. Latitude, longitude, distance, formula. So, let's look this up. Do some quick maths here. between two points on the earth. Lovely. Give me a formula I can use. Oh dear. Oh, interesting. 
This is using some far more advanced mathematics, but it makes sense. Cool. That's not a nice way to give a formula. Like the explanation's good. It makes sense. Um, to uh, it's literally doing triangulation. Uh, so I just want to get that formula put into nice neatness. Actually, let's do it the cheater way. Search NPM. Uh, I bet that's supposed to say altitude. Yeah, okay, let's give this a shot. So this is how <laughs> this is how easy it can be to do coding uh, in 2018 if you're fully um, okay with relying on other people's node packages. Um, given that 3,500 people have downloaded this in the last week, I'm gonna say it's probably safe to trust. Uh, although that is a super naive and stupid thing to say, but I could also go and look at their code if I wanted to, et cetera, et cetera. this package now I can include it let's look at their their github repo So we're, we're going to completely forego this fancy function that I wrote a long time ago, which probably has been broken for a long time. Um, and we're instead going to, so we're going to say, Longitude, okay. So for each of these points, we're going to make a new point. So we're going to say, how easy it is to never need to write your own math. Uh, lovely. Um, sometimes I like the challenge though, but you know, 2018 and whatnot. Oh yes, I have to restart this. And now magically we're showing jobs for Boston. 
because that's the closest city to the actual latitude and longitude that we have for Boston. Which means this function can go away. Bye. Great. And now there's probably a lot of well, so let's test with some other um, latitudes and longitudes. Let's look for one near the bottom here. Vancouver. Soup. Oh, come on, keyboard and negative 123. Just like someone from Vancouver to have a negative 123 longitude. So it started with Boston, New York City, San Francisco, Seattle. We are getting closer, you can see, to Vancouver, which was the eventual result. Perfect. Nailed it. Okay, that solved that problem. That was a little detour that I didn't think we'd be taking today. Um, so we've simplified some things. We got rid of a function. That's all lovely. Um, just make sure that that function is no longer used. It is in my tests. Because uh, all I was testing in my tests was the distance between two points. And all these tests can now go away. That's super funny. Well, had I written a proper suite of tests, I'm sure I would have found that problem at some point. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, shoot. Okay. We don't need this anymore. This should refresh one more time. Okay. So, in the name of recreating behaviors, um, oh, here's actually another great, great purpose for a new uh, route. So, um, if I had a route with just one, um, this might be my market ID. And so, um, now instead, uh, you can see that if we got in here and just put in the one uh, latitude, does that not work? Let's find out. Um, in my job list, I'm going to put another debugger where we were looking at that match before. And we'll see what comes back. So, uh, match and params came back with just market ID. And that's good. And so now we could do some smarter smartness around determining our market just from uh, a market ID, which is even better. So um, I'm going to change this to a market ID that we know exists, which would be 46 for Baltimore. Sure. We'll come in. We'll see we only have a market ID. So we're going to say... change some of these around a bit here. If, so we're, first we're going to check to see if it has both latitude and longitude. So otherwise it's not useful to search on. And we're going to do that. And then we're going to do this in here. So if it has latitude and longitude we can do that. And up here we'll say uh, let market. And then else if here so if we only have a market ID then what we're gonna do is say market equals get market from ID actually I think I have the markets in here no I don't Okay, 
Okay, so we're going to write a very quick get market from ID function, which is almost stupid to do, but if this was coming from an API, for example, this we would need this anyway. So Actually, there we go. Easy enough. Very simple function. Okay. Now we now we have a market ID or get market from ID function in our utils here. Just alphabetize those, and now we can search by just an input market. So if I refresh this, showing jobs for Baltimore at forty six, or if I put in the ID for uh, Austin sixty. Now we show jobs for Austin, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, that's great. So now we have some dynamic routing in place, uh, which is really cool. Um, what else might we do? So um, let's say for some reason we had uh, on this job list, we wanted to allow people who are looking at the jobs. Actually, we, this, is, this is a great example. So um, we have a drop down that allows people to select a location. Um, and what if, so we've already recreated this sort of behavior where we can show these kinds of things. Uh, we can format the job however we want. So um, we can reproduce the markup for this relatively easily. What I don't have right now is this sort of dynamic thing that lets them pick from a drop down and hit few jobs and see the jobs for that. So uh, here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna create components to do exactly that. Um, we're gonna start by exporting a new component as market drop down drop down from market drop down which of course is a file I haven't created yet market drop down .js. Okay, and we're gonna give it some default props. So we're gonna say um, default market equals, or let's see, initial market is gonna be the name of it, and this is gonna be a number. Uh, and we'll default that to Boston, which is kind of just my standard that we've been using uh, on the website. Boston is ID of 10. Um, we're going to say This is going to need some state. You can see I kind of follow a pattern when I do this because 
Um, it just makes sure, uh, it, it allows me to ensure that I don't forget anything. I'm sure there's ways to automate lots of this stuff too, to be honest, but. Okay, so we're gonna give this thing a constructor. We're gonna say, um, market ID. I'm going to be very specific here. I've done that correctly. What this should do really is just render every time it'll say current market is 10. Current market ID is 10. So let's start by including that in my job list here. We're gonna. I like to keep things alphabetical in these lists, um, which is maybe a little inattentive, but it helps to keep track of what's where. So, um, we're going to add a drop down here. Perfect. Current market is 10. So that's our default. Um, we can change that, of course, by providing an initial market ID here. giving that the market that here great okay uh, now I'm going to do some of the same stuff I had done elsewhere in here. Market is sixteen. I'm gonna say current market is. So I've just plumbed this in. It'll now look up the market as well. Uh, now we have to actually turn this thing into uh, a component. So um, those drop downs are selects. There we go. We need to import the list of markets. Constants. We're going to use Lodash to iterate over them. Mm, map. And we're going to say so for each market. Now, this is something I'm going to have to cheat and look up because I always forget what goes inside of the option thing for a select. Option label equals 
Uh, okay, well, we'll have to figure out how to make those nicer. Value equals the number, so the ID, and then the name inside of that. So. So now, I should have a drop down with all of these markets in it. Sweet. And I can set its value by providing, I think it's just providing a value to this thing. Sweet. So now we have this thing that defaults to the current market. I no longer need this. And the theory is that we could put a button next to this. So we're going to define some style rules in here. Uh, we'll do it here. didn't break anything. Stylesheet.create is not a function. Where do I import stylesheet from? Ah, new stylesheet. Illegal constructor. No. Okay. Uh, I can do it without that. I'll just use the object. Lovely. Okay, and next to my select, I'm going to have a button. Hi. Uh, and it will say, what does it say currently? View jobs. style rule here. Um, give it a little left margin. Save all this stuff. Uh -oh, put a comma here. Great. Now we've got a <laughs> Uh, mismatched button and um, drop down. That's completely perfectly okay. Um, what I want to do is, is um, when that button is clicked, to re-perform this search. So, how best to have done that? Actually, I may find that this does not belong in here. And instead belongs in the parent. Hmm. I think that's going to be the case. So let's simplify this. This drop down component will indeed just be the drop down. Uh, so, one thing we need to add into this is. An event that fires when this thing uh, 
changes on change sure um, and we're gonna say market changed this dot market changed uh, handle market changed we're gonna create a function then called handle market changed And then we're going to say we're going to look for a prop provided to this thing called on market changed. That will be a function. And if that function is there, we'll call it. So if on market changed and type of, oops on market changed equals function then um, there lovely so what that says is now I can have a inside of my list I can feed a function into this that will get called when the market changes Create that function in here. Call it handle market changed. We're going to inspect what's inside of this event thing and probably make it a little more straightforward. So, change that to Indianapolis. We now get this handle market changed bit that gets called. <laughs> okay. I think this might be one of those cases where there are actually two things that come into it. Let me close some of these things that are unnecessary right now. refresh this okay there's no value passed in and I don't know what this event is so nothing will be passed there um, let's see JavaScript select unchanged unchanged sure Ready buttons and checkboxes occurs when the check state has been changed. Uh, okay, so we're gonna have to do a little bit more searching around here. Ah, okay. Yeah, I thought that might be the case. So this is where we get into some <laughs> Always with the Bing. Uh, that, that's so Google doesn't track me down. So this is where we get into some um, React stuff that I might not have done before. Um, uh, so I'm defining something called market dropdown based on the input element here. And on market changed. <sighs> and it looks like we're going to be looking for selected index. So Let's see what happens. Doing some discovery here. 
changes to Osaka. So we do have, great, 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 this all worked. So this is the market dropdown. It's got, please, it's got a bunch of options inside of it. Also has a bunch of other properties, including a selected index, which is 36. Um, and so based on that selected index, we can now grab a, this options array, so. Market from ID. Great, I think that'll do it. So now up a level, I'll have passed the market back. Again, let's choose Osaka. That did not work. Ah, a couple of things, okay. React likes to have a key when it's rendering an array of things. I'm just cleaning up some markup here. Market dropdown. Market is assigned a value but is never used. Style is assigned a value but is never used. Yeah, whatever. We don't need that any longer, apparently. working so no 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 okay let's break this out Great, it worked. Okay, it was this dot value that was missing, I believe. So we have a selected index, grab the market ID from those options, we pass in a market, and then we fire off this on market changed with the market that is now changed. Cool, okay, great. I don't need this debugger any longer. Inside of this job list, I'm gonna change that from saying event and value to market. going to do this again. So what should happen now? In theory, this will all update when I change this to show jobs for another uh, city. So let's pick Charlotte. Look at that. What I haven't done is changed the state so that this is reflected. So what I should do is um, well, I can just be tidy about updating my market here. Um, there we go. Showing jobs for Richmond. 
showing jobs for Portland. And Tokyo. Nothing currently is showing for Tokyo. We should handle the there are no jobs here situation and also maybe organize this list. But look at that. That's great. So, um, man, probably just in time to wrap up today, but what did we do? So, uh, we worked in some latitude and longitude coordinates. Um, so, I can use different routes to trigger for latitude and longitude. So, if I wanted to do this, it should show me jobs for, oh dear. Good thing we checked. Job list. Line 51. Ooh, for some reason that did not result in a market coming back. Why? Why? Ah, okay. So, look at what happened here. This came back with params, and it only came back with a market ID, even though there were two here. So, there are two potential solutions to this. Um, one is to swap these so that the more specific one gets hit first. Let's see if that works. Uh, please don't freeze. I have frozen on me. this guy go come on come back so now I have latitude and longitude that have come back which should result in Boise showing apparently there are no jobs there currently this should still work if I change it yikes maybe not or the exact keyword can be used here Uh, and now these can be swapped back and it'll still pull a market oops dang what did I do okay it'll still pull a market from latitude and longitude because it found a more exact uh, route so we'll only accept the market param if there's just that provided otherwise latitude and longitude are, is, is what we'll look into should come back for Boise but oh I gotta get rid of these old uh, console logs. Why am I not seeing any jobs any longer? That's troubling. Let's grab the latitude and longitude of Boston again. Boise might not have any jobs currently, as much as we hate to say it. Ah. Okay, Boston's still working, and what if I provide just the ID? Now we come back with just a market ID. And we see jobs for Boston. Great. Okay. So just some debuggery going on there at the end. So what did we learn? Did some dynamic routing. So now I can um, pass in a market or a market or a latitude and a longitude from those. Um, our microservice goes and loads jobs. We also plumbed in something to show the current market that we're showing jobs for, as well as a dropdown. Uh, which will switch the market and show jobs from other areas. Um, that's probably good for this week. Um, what I need to do now is go back and um, re-include test cases and reconfigure Circle CI so that this thing works, because um, we took that out last week when we did Create React App. Um, so maybe that's what I'll start with next week on stream. Then we can do some formatting of this stuff, and then we can play around with including this uh, in, in parts of the site, um, which is really cool. That means this is coming to... Uh, hopefully a point where we can button it up and get it shipped um, it's, and yeah it's working um, 
yeah okay well i'm gonna call it a day for the stream you all have a great afternoon if you need to find me i am on twitter at irreverent mike uh, or you can email me at m by at aquint aquent uh, y'all have a good afternoon <laughs>